Now imagine pulling up at the fuel station and having to help yourself fill your tank. Yes, that's exactly what the oil marketing companies are preparing to introduce in Ghana and it will take place before the end of this year. It is one of many interventions to mitigate the impact of high taxes and levies which the Association of Oil Marketing Companies say are crippling their businesses. Our volumes go down. So obviously we don't want to increase, like it has to go to 30%. We, will not we don't want to increase 30% our margins. Because if we do that, then it becomes very astronomical and consumers cannot pay. So we we'll try to go down on our margin, which affects the security and the safety of our outlets. Because we'll be cutting corners, obviously. So we also limit, it gives me the space for us to increase anything. So we come down. And that's where the potential pricing comes in. We price in such a way that at least we empathize with the Ghanaian public or the consuming public what is going on. We don't have, have the same percentage, you know, same quantum leap. In response to this, you mentioned that you're introducing technology and you're also going to cut jobs to ensure that your businesses are uh, still running. And tell us about that. Uh, what, what exactly are you going to do? Look, we are not interested in cutting jobs, but we are interested in driving our costs down. So in the course of, of course, the easiest one to drive your costs down is the manpower. And we want to use technology. It helps us with many folds. For instance, there will be no big tight party in the stations, and obviously the personnel will not be there. You see, for instance, I give you the example, airport will be very expensive to manage. So if you do put the technology there, you can use a dividend. This is my hometown, Ashwaka for India, it's going to be tough. If you put it there, already people are not buying. So you will not make it, you understand? <laughs> so but I wanted to understand the technology. Mm -hmm. how, how the technology. What is going to happen is that, uh, the technology says that as fuel gets into the station, you see it. So if somebody else is sending fuel other than the OMC, we'll see it. And secondly, when things are done, for instance, you are buying fuel from the station, I can see remotely how much you are buying, what is reading on the on the dispenser. So if someone is trying to do hanky packy, I usually say, I stop him. Well, they shy away from stating it in plain language, but it definitely will, will result in the loss of thousands of jobs at fuel stations. Let's have a better understanding of what the situation is regarding this issue. Duncan Amwa is Executive Director of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers. He joins me on the line. Hello, Mr. Duncan. Well, good afternoon. Now, tell us what your understanding is uh, as far as COPEC is concerned, what the situation is. Uh, being described to us by the oil marketing companies really is? Uh, there are a lot of issues confronting the oil marketing companies. Uh, we've, on a number of occasions, raised some of these critical issues uh, that demand our attention. Unfortunately, not much has been done about it. So they talk about their overhead and uh, they talk about expenses being uh, rather on the high. I, I side with them. Unfortunately, I do not think that job cuts uh, would be the way to go. There are a lot of other things uh, that can be done uh, in the interim to ensure that their overheads are a bit uh, reasonable to them. And I would rather they focus a lot more of their energy on some of these uh, necessary interventions uh, needed to be put in place for them as opposed to cutting jobs. It's well, one of the things that people uh, 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 makes people think this is not workable in Ghana is that they believe there would be some sort of theft. Help us understand how this approach will work. Uh, if the elsewhere uh, in a lot of the advanced countries, uh, self-service is the way to go. In fact, I am even of the opinion, considered opinion, that uh, self-service in Ghana would equally help. Uh, especially with the fact that uh, most fuel stations in Ghana close uh, be before 10 p.m. And so for people who happen to be driving out late, sometimes it's a bit difficult to get fuel uh, on a stretch to buy. And so self-service would be able to uh, eliminate some of those challenges, especially if every station uh, is able to have at least one pump machine uh, that serves itself. And you can put in a card, uh, and get some fuel, uh, and then also they can put in some security measures to ensure that people do not abuse that system. 
Uh, it's been done elsewhere, so self-service can work. But I do not immediately think that we should replace the current uh, poor pump attendant uh, jobs uh, with automated machines that uh, deliver on their own uh, without any operator assistance. That I do not think uh, would help. But self-service stations uh, are working elsewhere. Uh, there are ways also to prevent anybody from assessing the back end uh, so as to manipulate or get uh, these machines to just uh, uh, do anything on toward as in steal it. And so that can be implemented, but I do not think that the cost of these uh, automated machines uh, together with the cost uh, that these stations are going to incur uh, right from the onset uh, would make it anything a, a better alternative as to what is uh, currently prevailing. We do think that jobs would have to be maintained. And if the stations or the OMTs would want to go uh, this way, uh, we should graduate it uh, such that we do not uh, do this thing overnight and, and, and drive people home uh, just to be sure they've lost jobs. We should be able to get uh, uh, the situation uh, done, peace mill, and uh, graduated, if you ask me. Well, how, how do you exactly envisage or recommend um, that this self-service self, self approach goes on and, and, and the companies still have to keep the uh, workers around? H how do the two work? Uh, what happens elsewhere, what pertains, is that most of the countries that have uh, moved to cashless systems uh, where a lot of cards are rather used, uh, it is a lot, lot convenient to get to uh, a station and uh, either you pay cash or you pay uh, e-cash and uh, be able to get there yourself, the number of liters you are actually paying for. And so that is done. That can be done here. But I do not also immediately think that uh, just graduating overnight uh, will be able to address the challenge that the OMC complain about. Already they complain of overhead. Uh, very high overhead uh, that cripple a lot of their businesses. And so if you are going to go in to invest so much uh, in technology overnight, I foresee a bigger challenge rather being created. And that is why uh, we argue that it, it works. Uh, a lot of the stations can begin uh, with getting at least one machine uh, at the station that is automated such that beyond the regular pump hours or working hours, uh, people can still be able to buy fuel uh, with e-card or the, the card system without necessarily getting a pump attendant or endangering uh, people at these stations or outlets. So that should be considered, but we shouldn't be in a hurry uh, such that we collapse existing jobs and then immediately bring in these automated pumps uh, just to... Uh, say that we are cutting down overhead. That will not work in Ghana uh, within the next five to ten years. Well, we'll see what the plan is by the um, oil marketing companies. Duncan Amwa, there, he's executive secretary for COPEC.